morning, everybody. Good morning. So today again, welcome to the seventh uh, session of Design Pattern. At the beginning with uh, the session, we're going to start with Fetic Pattern. And by the way, I'm Shobha. And, uh, I work for uh, Global Services Group, if you don't know me. So, let's start with the pattern. This is uh, Fetic, as the name suggests. It is trying to provide a unified interface to a subsystem. So now let's start with what is a subsystem. Generally when we uh, start designing a system, we divide it into multiple subsystems to provide particular functionality so that it's easier to assemble the system. Right? So basically the goal of the a goal is to The goal goes to reduce the complexity of the entire system. But what happens as the design evolves, we keep on adding components to it and the complexity increases. If there are multi lines, different parts of the system, so what happens is the clients and the system increases. So creating a tight coupling and a lot of problems as the, you know, as the system evolves. So in order to address that, this pattern was introduced. If you see uh, the intent of this pattern as written in the book is provide unified ways to a set of cases in a subsystem. It defines a higher level interface that makes the subsystem easier to use. Okay, so the basic goal of this whole pattern is to make provide a simple interface which is more like in nature. Okay. So it actually as it deals with the classes and its composition to build a, a different uh, uh, structure or a complex structure. So let's see the motivation on why, as I explained, I explained in simple terms, let me explain with an example. So I'll just take a real world example. Suppose if you hire a taxi, okay? Uh, so you are a client and you hire a taxi with a driver. Say, uh, let us assume that this is a subsystem, right? So because you want some service from this whole system, that is you, you want to reach certain destination using this system, right? So the interface to this is you say take me to destination To the, your only interface is the driver. You are not bothered how this, how the driver is going to drive and how he is going to navigate through, how he is going to find the route. So your interface is going to be with the driver and you tell him, take me to the destination X. Now the driver has to deal with the car, his navigation system and other components. You know, to increase the experience, you may switch on the music, etc. etc. Right? So here you are not irrespective of the car model of the car or the other subsystems involved. Your only interface is the driver. Right? Anything here changes, you are not impacted because you are still going to say take me to the destination Y or X or Z. That's the only interface here. If the car model changes in log on to Innova, etc., whatever, your interface is going to remain constant. So here, in this whole example, driver is acting as a facet. He is providing as a unified interface to the entire subsystem. Is this clear? Any doubts? Right? So that's what we are going to say. If we let the client interact with all these subcomponents, this is how the picture is going to look. Right? And now if I create a facade and a driver, this is how the system is going to look in. Right? Here we are decoupling the, the clients from the subsystem components, which could be taxi and a navigation system, etc. Right? So this is the whole idea of facade part. So the applicability 
when you want to provide a simple interface to a subsystem which is large we will go for facet and when you want to layer your sub subsystem in this sense you want to create an entry point to your subsystem which has multiple classes and each one can be reused by a client but then you want to provide a unified interface so any impacts can be taken care of then you go for facet and also you want to minimize the communication and the dependency between the client and the subsystem this communication dependency would be very uh, handling would be very, very important in case of large system where for a small change entire system might need to be you know recompiled if you don't take care of things properly right so this is where facet would be useful so the participants of the system are facet as we said the driver who delegates requests to the appropriate system and helps in addressing the problem and the subsystem classes who implements their own functionality as such and handles the request from the facet so again i'm illustrating with this this is a very simple pattern so if you take example of a file transfer protocol subsystem there are multiple protocols implemented ftp fttps http etc right and multiple clients could be referred to any of these protocols or multiple of them based on the need right so this system if we simplify would look like this all the client will only interact with file transfer packet class and that would in turn handle the request and pass it out to the respective components of the subsystem or the respective classes of the subsystem right so here the clients do not know which class addresses its uh, its request request it only knows that i need to send my request to the packet class and it will take care of forwarding the request to the components of the subsystem So let's. Uh, uh, I've taken this example for uh, here. I've been. I'm giving code, which will explain you how to implement packet. So here, the subsystem contains multiple connectivity interfaces: USB, Bluetooth. I've just limited to two. You can add uh, other interfaces if you want, and which in turn uses file directory subsystem uh, classes. Sorry. And now the the problem is. that you want to transfer files from your device to a peripheral device which is connected either to usb or or bluetooth so based on the circumstances in the deal you will know so what happens is the uh, is how the implementation so i've just given a prototype of the actual implementation so class usb has members is available connect and send similarly class bluetooth has member functions is available connect authenticate and send okay now we introduce the facet class called file transfer facet it implements function called send file this is what is going to be referred by all the clients here the uh, of the facet knows which is the usb interface and uh, which how to check whether it is open how to send the file etc will be handled it knows it delegates basically the responsibility to the sub classes so the and the test program you can see how we invoke the send file right so first it checks if the usb interface is available if the device is connected through usb transfer it otherwise checks the bluetooth as it says on the interface none of the interface is available right so the inference or the understanding from this whole pattern is it shields the main clients from the subsystem components and provides a simple interface because the clients will only know about the packet class they are not bother about the sub classes So it reduces the number of objects in its deal. 
So, uh, what dependency reduces? Once dependency reduces, you are not anymore referring to any of the objects or the classes. So, you don't need to recompile every time there is any change in the subsystem. Only when there is a change to the facet class, you uh, has to recompile it. And it goes between the subsystems clients. So this is very much important case if you are developing client and the subsystem independently. So it ensures that you don't have uh, circular dependencies. Right? Let's you with the component subsystem without a client. If I add a new interface, I today I am the Bluetooth and I add Wi-Fi. The client need not know about it. I do only the modification in the packet, so only the subsystem is touched, right? So it ends the changes are not, not back in the case. Also, if in there are some, but there, there, may, there may be some circumstances where the clients may have to use particular classes of subsystem in rare scenarios. So it does not prevent you from exposing those classes. You can use, you can have, you can also have those other classes which can be like a client. This is not doing it. If in particular need arise, you can also expose the public class interface. Okay. So, in short, it is, it is encapsulating the subsystem. Packet is encapsulating the subsystem. Like a class encapsulates all the other Now we need to go to some comparisons. Okay, we talked about includes other classes, other sorry, other patterns. Some of the patterns that come into uh, competition are uh, adapter and mediators. Adapter has a difference in case of adapter not introducing it. Into the interface to the need of a existing class, right? Existing client. So as it's written there, adapter lets the classes work together, different other ways become part of the interface. So you may you try the faces of the adapter. Whereas factored, you will create a new interface, new simplified interface for the entire series. So adapter converts the interface of a class into client's ex expectation. Okay. Compared with the mediators on the previous page. Okay. So, a mediator which works together with other peers. Okay. So, it can handle uh, communication across peers of the same uh, group, same subsystem. I guess. So, subsystem components are not aware of it as neither the reference the package register. What kind of register can is in the system does not even know that there is a class that uh, that is existing called facet. They, they are very independent from the facet, whereas in case of maybe the colleague of the particular data with the system, with the, it's like even subsections. So facet does not add any new functionality and mediator does. In case, in this case, if okay, we just know uh, there are subsystems, uh, components which are including functional. Just create a simple interface to the existing functions. We are creating a new functionality as such. So at the max, it can just take care of translation across to, uh, from clients to match to the subsystem components. There is any notion like that. So, what comparison? Any questions? So, then that's it. Yeah.